all newspapers with the standard faces of terror. And we've gone on ahead to give you what happened exactly from 3 p.m. We've broken down the chronological order of that. Um, in the Daily Nation inside the Hotel of Terror. But you, if you open the very first page of the standard newspaper today, when terror hits pain, anguish, and acts of bravery, you will see some, yes, heartbreaking pictures, but as well some amazing pictures of our security forces protecting Kenyans and non-Kenyans as well during that specific incident. We've gone on to cover more of it on page 4 and page 5, but let me bring your attention again, page 6 and page 7, page 8 and page 9, as well as page 10. We've broken down to you the timelines of the attacks that we've seen since um, 2011 all the way down to 2012, 2013 and 2014. Um, just to say a few lists. So there's an entire timeline that the Standard Newspaper has done. The Standard Newspaper has dedicated the first 10 pages of our entire publication to just breaking down this entire um, um, situation that is currently happening. It's the same story within the Daily Nation. You can tell that um, the main story, like I said, the front page inside Hotel of Terror. Quite an amazing picture there of a Kenyan helping yet another Kenyan, our security forces. And... Um, I'm turning the first page and it's exactly the same thing. Our Kenyan security forces are on the line, making sure they're saving Kenyans as well. You can see um, the face, the sort of, you can, you can tell the sort of relief when a family or friend member gets to receive a loved one. So make sure you grab a copy of this. Um, the Daily Nation has also given a history of the deadly terror attacks on page four through to page five. And um, this is what we'll be discussing right now on press review as uh, um, we just uh, make sure that we're going to continue to give you live updates of what's happening. That is live um, from Riverside at Dusit D2. And of course, Hussein Mohammed, our crime investigative reporter, is there. So what you're seeing are security forces continue to trickle in. And that's, those are live images of what's happening there. Back here in studio, I have security analyst, in, analyst rather, Mbijiwe Mwenda. It's good to have you with us. Of course, not on the best circumstances, but thank you for making time this morning. Thank you. And uh, I, I, though it's a sad time, we are a country used to moments of stress like this. Mm. And we've never broken our spirit. Never. So, viva Kenya. Mm. Onward together. That's the hashtag that is here. We shall overcome. I love the conversation online. You can see that Kenyans are choosing to have a united front, even moving forward as we're facing this. Oh, yes. There is a, there's another journalist, uh, or rather a newspaper in the UK, that asked the question, is it safe to travel to Kenya? Daily Express. Now I'm a Pasha. Mm. You the see, New York Times. You see, the, the, the sheng is to mm. Like they are being informed. Mm -hmm. Kenyans were out there defending their country. Right. This is what was missing in this country for a long time. We let the war on terror become the war for the men in uniform. But now it has become the war of the citizens. In the United States, the war on terror started with citizens. Average common citizens decided one day on 9-11, on one of the planes that was, set, was heading to the White House or to the Congress, the one that you know, uh, exploded over the Pennsylvania forest, the citizens in the plane decided, hey, two planes have been banged into mm. the northern south towers mm -hmm. of, the, of the Twin Towers. Uh, one has hit the Pentagon. This is going somewhere. Forget about this guy threatening us with a bomb. Let's take him down. The war on terror was best fought by citizens. And this is what you see with net, net sense, the Kenyans on the internet. Mm. They have decided to defend this country. I thank the bloggers. I thank, you know, uh, uh, you know common Monainchi for the fight they have taken online. From yesterday, I began to see security advices from average Kenyans. Hey, don't call your loved ones. You could give them up. I mean, give them out to the terrorists. Ask them to silence their, to, to put their phones on silence if they are hiding anywhere in the Dusit complex. Man, th this is improved security culture. And I would give Kenya a A today for that response, especially from the citizens. Let's talk about that. And I'm glad you've even mentioned that. Like I've told you, the first five trends on social media are all having to do with that and Kenyans voicing. In fact, that specific account for New York Times that posted the photo has been suspended by Twitter after Kenyans came out to you know, show their grievance around that. But let's talk about wow. that. You find yourself 
in the midst of this, be it at a shopping mall, especially now in this scenario, it was a, at, at a sort of hotel slash shopping center, mm -hmm. Westgate, another popular mall. What do you do? What's the first thing you do? You see, the moment you hear an explosion around you or a gun, gun, gun fire, gunshot around you, if you're lucky to still be standing on your feet. Mm -hmm. I was in the military and they taught us that the, 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 the bullet flies faster than the sound. Mm -hmm. So if you're lucky to hear it, it means you're still alive. So if you hear the sound, hit the floor. First thing hit Lower the floor. your elevation. Okay. Make sure you are slow on the ground as possible. But don't sleep there like you're sleeping in your bedroom. You're, you're, you're lowering your elevation so you could be safe from, fr from flying bullets and so you can observe. So lower your elevation and then observe. As you observe, then you'll be able to tell who's firing. I like the response and maybe you have that clip, I saw it in most media houses last night, of the, of the motorbike rider who said he was among the first people to be shot at. He, he had been delivering a letter then went back to his bike. No sooner was he on his bike than, you know, uh, bullets began flying. He says, I went down next to his bike, and I think that's the bike we saw next to the vehicles that were burning yesterday. Then after that, he did the second thing. After you observe it, you're sure what's going on, then take to your feet. You are as, you are as safe as you are away from the scene of that incident. Right. Whatever it is, and, and I see Kenyans, the, the other Kenyans who are not caught in that uh, situation, I find them running back in than running away. Right. And please share with us some more security tips. You said, number one, it's not good to pick up phone calls, which is something Kenyans were sharing a lot, because that might sort of give you off. Actually, you make sure your phone is on silence. Silent. Uh, even vibration mode sometimes can, can, can be heard. Can, yeah, can, so since yeah. that's all you are actually there to do to survive, just make sure the phone is totally on silence mode, not even vibrating, and then keep observing the phone because that's all you have then lower the battery the battery um, life the, the battery life so that uh, the battery could could serve you longer and then you know block i mean lock the doors if you can uh, you know camouflage yourself lower the lighting in the room for example switch off lights are the main lights and these these uh, crazy terrorists don't even have night uh, night vision Google. So if you if you switch off the lights even at the main at the at the main power source, they they're not going to be able to navigate in the in the in the building. Okay, so a lot of our loved ones were in the part of the hostage situation. They spent the night there. What do you do in such a scenario if you've been there from like 3 p.m. and it broke off, and you aren't lucky enough to be saved during the day hours? So at night. Now you can still hear the gunshots going. Perhaps at this time you're hungry, your food, I mean, your battery life is uh, not at its best. Actually, after you, you run, we, we say one of the responses, I mean, the first response is observe then run. Mm. Second is if you can't run and you're trapped in there, hide. 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 Hide well. And there are two ways to hide. You can camouflage yourself. For example,